Welcome back, I'm Ashley. I'm a blogger at The Frugal Ginger, and I love sharing money-saving tips and tricks to help you run your family and your finances more effectively and efficiently. If that's something that you're into, make sure to subscribe below for more tips. Today, I am working with Cricut to put together this video. I am not a crafter. I don't consider myself to be very crafty. So when they asked me to try out one of their new Explore Air 2 machines, I was a little hesitant. I didn't know how easy this would be to do, but I wanted to give it a shot in case you're in the same situation. You don't really know if it's gonna be worth the money or if it's going to be easy to use. Um, so I put it to the test to see if I could do it because trust me, if I can do this, anybody can. So I wanted to do a little craft to show you how to do this. I'm going to try to make a personalized library tote bag I go to the library a lot. I usually take my daughter every two weeks and we get at least 10 books. So it would be nice to have a good sturdy tote bag to take with us. And I'm going to try to make it on the Cricut Explore Air 2 to see how this goes as a beginner. This is supposed to be an easy craft to do, so that's why I chose it. And kind of see if I'm not going to ruin it. but. Come along as I try to do this and we'll see how it turns out. Fingers crossed. I got the Cricut Explore Air 2 to cut the vinyl for this project. Um, I got the mint green color, which I love. It's my favorite color. I didn't even request it, but somehow they knew and sent it to me. Um, they did send me the Explore Air 2 along with all the other supplies that I'm going to need so I do want to be honest about that But it was very easy to set up um, All you do is just plug it in you turn it on and you plug it in um, the USB into your computer and Then it, it will walk you through step by step about how to set it up. It was very simple to do and what I really liked that they did is they give you materials to do like a practice project. I was a bit hesitant about just, you know, going full speed into my very first project. So I appreciate that they had uh, all the materials so you didn't waste anything that you actually buy. So they give you uh, material to make a card and it kind of walks you through step by step exactly what you need to do to make this card. It was very easy and it helps you kind of learn the machine and get to know it and build a little bit of confidence in yourself. So I did that first and I was very proud that I did not ruin the practice project. So I felt a little bit more confident to go ahead and jump into making this tote bag. All I did was go into the Cricut Design Space and I found the template that I wanted to use. It was already pre-made because I'm not quite at the level to go ahead and make my own designs yet. I wanted to do this, something that was already made for me. So it said that it was an easy project. It should take about 30 minutes to do. It says you will uh, need black and like scion vinyl. I didn't have enough black vinyl to do this project, but I did have some gold glitter iron on vinyl and some bright teal everyday iron on vinyl. So those are the colors that I went with. They're my favorite colors. So um, is, I was able to give it a little personal touch. You can choose any colors that you want. You can use vinyl you may already have. So I use those two vinyls. And then of course you'll also need a blank canvas tote bag, whatever size you want. I decided to go with the large tote bag. Since we get a lot of books at the library, I was gonna need a big bag. And then to do the iron on, I was also sent an easy press too. But if you don't have one of those, you can just use a regular iron and like a fluffy towel. They did send me an easy press mat to go with that. But like I said, just use a towel. If you don't have that on hand, it's not a big deal. First thing I did in the design space was open up the project and then I clicked on text to add text to the books. And I picked my favorite book titles. Uh, some things like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Anna Green Gables, Little Women, all my favorite books growing up. It was very easy to uh, make the size smaller, bigger, not that difficult. And um, doing the practice project really helped as well by walking me through the steps that I need to know. 
Once I had everything looking the way that I wanted it to be, I just clicked make it and it came up with two screens. I would need to cut all the letters on the gold vinyl first. And this is where it got a little bit confusing because it said that my vinyl was going to be larger than 11 and a half inches. What I would need was going to be 12 by 16 inch piece of vinyl. So the mat that I had only went 12 by 12. So what I did was I took two 12 by 12 mats and kind of just layered them a little bit at the ends so that I could then roll the vinyl all the way out. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. There weren't very good instructions as far as this section went. So I kind of just had to improvise and wing it, but it worked. So. I don't know if you're supposed to do it that way, but it cut the letters the right, so. So now that the glitter, I, um, glitter vinyl was cut out, I needed to do the teal everyday iron-on. This is where it took me a little longer to do because I had to cut it three times. The first time I used the wrong type of vinyl, I didn't know that, uh, I had an iron-on vinyl and then I had just a regular vinyl. But the regular vinyl has like this paper backing on it. See, there's the vinyl and then this, this paper. This is not iron-on. I didn't know that. Iron-on is just shiny teal on the back. Um, so I cut it on this, realized it was the wrong vinyl. So I had to go back and recut it again on the regular, um, on the right vinyl. But when I cut it on the iron vinyl, that I'm supposed to, for some reason, it cut it off center. So it only cut like four books and the rest were cut on the mat. And I don't know how that happened because I had it lined up the right way. I even double checked when I pulled it out. I was like, okay, what did I do? Did I mess this up? I still don't know how it got messed up. So I went back, did the exact same thing with another piece of vinyl, and then it cut right. So I didn't change anything. I don't know what happened, why it cut wrong the first time. But the second time, it did what it was supposed to. After that, and it took seemed like it took forever, I was able to get my gold letters cut out. I got my teal books cut out. Now it was time to do the weeding which is where you take all the dead space in between the letters so that you can actually see the letters. I don't recommend doing the glitter iron-on iron -on vinyl for your very first project because I didn't know how difficult it was going to be to see the letters in the glitter. So what I did, because I couldn't really see the letters very well, was I just pulled back the excess vinyl so that I could see the letters laid out in front of me. I don't know if this is the right way you're supposed to do it or not. There were no real clear instructions on what to do next. So I just pulled the vinyl off so that I could see all the letters and then I was able to kind of cut each individual title out and then weed that way. So it was a lot easier to do that way i don't know if that's the right way but it worked for me and then i did the same thing with the teal books i just peeled back the excess vinyl to reveal the books and i didn't have to weed anything with that and we were good to go the weeding took forever because this is my first time doing it and i had a lot of words a lot of o's and a's and e's that you had to get that little dead space out of so it took a lot longer than 30 minutes. I think by the time everything was all said and done, it was about two hours. Since I was sent the Easy Press 2, that's what I use to iron on the letters. What I do like about the Easy Press is that it has a heat guide on the Cricut website. You just go to the heat guide, you choose uh, what kind of base material you're using. So for me, it was a cotton canvas bag and then the iron-on material, which is glitter, and then the everyday iron-on. And it would tell me exactly what temperature to set the Easy Press to and how long to set the time for. If you're using an iron, I'm not really sure what heat setting to put it to. You, you probably have like low, medium, or high. 
So it can be a little iffy choosing the right setting. The Easy Press 2 is more exact. Um, what I did is I took the canvas tote, before I put any iron on vinyl, I uh, cleaned it off really good with like a lip brush roller, make sure there wasn't any kind of dust or debris on it. And then I heated the actual bag where I was going to put the vinyl on for five seconds, get it nice and warm so that the vinyl will stick good. Uh, you know, just center up the letters as best I could. Once the easy press was heated and ready to go, I just put it right on top of the vinyl, hit the time button and it counted down for me. After that, you flip the bag over to do the back just for about 15 seconds so that it helps the vinyl adhere even better. I don't know why it didn't work the first time that I did it. I had to do it about two to three times for each area of vinyl. I don't know if the setting was wrong or if I did something wrong with the heat guide, but it didn't work the first time. It's okay because after doing it two or three times, the vinyl was fully on the bag. So when I peeled it off, it didn't come up at all. It stayed on the bag. If you do start peeling the plastic off uh, and it starts, the letters start coming up with it, just do it again until it's good to go. Now, once you heat it, you have to let it cool for a little bit, but it still needs, this type of vinyl needed a warm peel. So it still needs to be warm, but not hot when you peel the plastic off. So remember that. But once I got all of the letters on, I was done and look, I made it. It came out, it's still together, nothing fell off yet it's been a couple days um but i made it and i'm proud of myself even though it took me a few hours to do this when it was supposed to take 30 minutes but that's okay i feel like i've got the hang of it now so the next project should not take as long but you can see that i ran into some hiccups along the way so if you're a beginner crafter, it's fine. You'll probably make a mistake like I did, but you can bounce back from it and still make the project. Now, the Cricut Explore Air 2 is a little pricey. I think it's around 250. As of this filming, I think it's on sale for 250. But it is a cheaper alternative to the Cricut Maker, which is I think their larger version. Um, the only difference that I really could tell by reading online from the Cricut Explore Air 2 and the Cricut Maker is the Cricut Maker can cut thicker fabric. Like if you're wanting to do felt or I don't, I don't know what else you would cut, but some kind of fat, thick fabric or um, ceramic even, uh, the Cricut Maker is what you would want. If you're just wanting to do iron-on like vinyl um, infusible ink, paper cardstock. You might want to just stick with the Explore Air 2. Honestly, that's all I see myself using. I don't really see myself making anything with fabric or felt or having to sew anything together. I'm not good with a sewing machine. I failed miserably in home ec with the sewing machine. So I know that's not my future. So those, the Explore Air 2 works for me and it's cheaper than the maker. I think it's around 50 to hundred dollars cheaper. So if you're just looking to stick with the vinyl and the paper, go with this. I do think it's worth the price. It's really versatile. You can make so many different things with this. You can make all kind of holiday decor and you know, all those holiday shirts you want to buy each year. You can make them yourself. I, I saw one shirt I wanted. It was about 40 bucks online and I'm like, I can make that with my little Explore Air. So I think I'm going to try to make that the following holiday. Now that Christmas just ended, I'm going to make it for next year. And I can also make things for my daughter. She already picked out a Valentine's Day shirt she wants me to make for her. So that might be my next video project that I try to do and not mess, mess up. But if you really see yourself using this often, making holiday gifts, birthday gifts. You could even make stuff to sell. Hello, Etsy. Um, so I think it is worth it. It's very easy to use. I didn't break it yet, so that's a good sign. Yeah, I like it and I kind of am excited to do my next project. 
So I'll make sure to film the next one too so you can see how I do if I'm getting better. And I hope this was helpful if you're looking into getting the Cricut Explore Air 2 yourself, give you a little bit of insight. Or if you just wanna make this library tote bag like I did, um, you can see how easy it is once you actually use the right vinyl. It's not so bad, but I hope you like this video. I'll see you next time.